back to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to step a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm going to do a Cuban roast. I'm doing this for Christmas Eve. It's my Christmas Eve dinner. As many of you know, I live down in South Florida. Um, I have so many Hispanic friends. My I call her my Cuban sister, Olga. She's the one that I get most of my Cuban recipes from. I'm learning my Cuban recipes from her. She is from Cuba. She lives in Key West. We get to see her until this pandemic. We were down there 10 to 20 times a year. So I was always learning more and more of her recipes. She is an amazing cook. The flavors that I've learned to love from Cuba are just, they just complement what we normally eat here. They're more citrus based, more pork, of course. Every, every holiday they're having pork, which I love because I love smoked pork. Kind of relates to my Southern roots and smoking um, pork and everything like that. But this is called a lechon asado. I'm sure they're gonna tell me I said it wrong. It's L-E-C-H-O-N and A-S-A-D-O, lechon asado. Um, I actually have a, probably about an eight to 10 pound um, pork shoulder that I started last night and put in the refrigerator overnight to marinate. I'm gonna show you now what I did and what all I put in it. I took this out of the refrigerator about an hour ago. I did one time last night turn it over. I started with the fat cap down and marinated it. And then just before I went to bed, I turned it back over so the meat side was down and the fat cap was up to get more flavors into the uh, meat. And all that garlic, all the oregano, everything like that just soaking into the meat. Now, usually we do this in the oven, but I'm gonna use my turkey roaster and just so I can free up my oven for some other things today. We're gonna to do this at 300 degrees. It's gonna go for six to eight hours. Six hours if you wanna slice it, if you want sliced pork. If you wanna shred it like I'm going to do, we're gonna do it for eight hours. That way it breaks down more and you can actually shred it. And then put all these juices on it. It is amazing. You're gonna love it. I can't wait to show you that. So I'll see you in about eight to 10 hours. Actually, it has not been eight to 10 hours. It's just a couple minutes later. I forgot, I mean, I'm gonna put about a cup of water in here. And that's about all that we're going to need. And once that starts cooking, all that fat's gonna start rendering out and liquid from the pork. So it's just going to add more juices down below, which in turn, when I shred it, I'm just gonna pour that all over it. So I'll see you in about eight hours. Okay, so we're back, and since I was having a little confusion here, I messaged earlier and said what I had done. Olga texts back and said that I messed up. I need to do the lechon asado. Did I say that right? Yes. Lechon asado with the fat cap up. So I changed that, and I decided I'm just going to bring Olga, my Cuban sister down in Key West. She's going to help us out here. So the roast is almost done. Well, it is done. It's sitting back here in the roaster. I've got the black beans and rice here. She said for the black beans and rice, I'm going to saute onions and pepper and garlic, you said? Yes, you're gonna uh, saute onions and pepper and garlic okay. and put some um, salted pork in there also if you want to give it more flavor. And should I save some of this um, onion for on the yuca? Yes, for okay. the yuca. So this will go, oh, is the uh, pepper supposed to be diced or strips? You have to dice it, please. Of course, now I gotta take it out of here. 
<laughs> now is this um lechon lechon asado is that like a christmas meal or is this just a special how, how can you guys do this it's a traditional uh christmas eve dinner that the cubans do normally we roast the whole pork in the backyard and stuff and then the females are in the kitchen cooking sorry um uh, the, the rest, the remainders of the food, the black beans and rice cooked together, the yucca and all that stuff. And then other people in the family bring dessert like flan, dress leche, different types of Cuban desserts. She makes the most amazing desserts and baked goods. Okay, so I'm going to start sauteing this. Got it turned on. The adobo, what's that in the cumin? You will be adding that into the beans. The beans. Uh, now remember, I don't measure, so I will tell you when to stop. Okay, here goes the cumin. Okay, good. And the adobo. Okay. Now you have to shake your body while you're doing that. It's a, it's a thing. Yes. You're gonna make a fool. You're you're making a fool out of me. No, I'm not. The Cuban, the Cuban tradition, how we are taught. Is like daddy said, you shake until the spirits inside you say stop. There you go. Okay. Well, I don't have any spirits in me right now. I will in a little bit. I'll be cracking open my whiskey. <laughs> um, put a little pinch of salt in it. In the onions and peppers? Nope. Inside the beans. Okay. But okay. you did it. Okay. <laughs> and stir it out. Now, just to let everybody know, I've already done the beans. I did. I cheated. I didn't use dry beans. I used canned beans with a can of water, and I put a smoked ham hock in there, cooked it down, and then took the ham hock out, shredded all the meat, and put it back in there. So that's our black beans. I've already been nibbling on them. Some of them are already gone. And these are all going to go in here. Now, we've also got the salt pork. You said, where am I putting that? In here, too? You're going to cut a little bit. Uh, you're gonna cut a small piece because it's only for two. Well, this is this is in strips. Okay, get three strips and cut them. Okay, and just dice those up. Top them up, or if you want them whole, it's up to you. It's your choice. Now that's going to give the flavor also to your beans okay. and the ham hock is going to give it a smoky taste to it okay. and also a ham flavor, which is very, very good. Yeah, I use ham hocks all the time in my pinto beans, so that's kind of, that's our southern and Cuban mixing there. I actually went to the store to get the ham hock and they didn't have any smoked and the guy said well I've got fresh ones you can use that and I said well no I gotta have smoke he said you, you won't know the difference obviously I didn't buy it I went somewhere else because I do know the difference yep and I didn't have time to smoke it myself now this is old school Cuban from my parents from Cuba this is what they taught us right. how to cook this and for everybody to know Olga lives in Cuba so she is a conch a conch just means you are from Key West. I'm not a conch even though I go down there a lot. They made me an honorary one. She did, but I'm not a conch. <laughs> and if any of you ever get down to Key West, go into Smoking Tuna. There you go. Go into Smoking Tuna. She's the manager of basically everything. But tell her, hi, tell her I said hi. Tell her you saw her on here. So now do we want these a little bit crisp or all the way soft? Just stop. Okay, so I'm gonna put a lid on them. Okay. And let them cook off. I'm not gonna put the garlic in yet because it'll burn, right? Yeah, you wait till the end to put the garlic because you don't want that to burn. And you only put like in the garlic because it's a small amount. Mm -hmm. Just put like one uh, spoon of okay. garlic. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to put a lot, a lot, a lot. And I put salt in here, any pepper? You can put pepper, it's your liking. Hank the white boy said that it's not supposed to be spicy. 
Okay, yeah, Hank's her husband. He, he's the other gringo in the mix here. Yes. <laughs> it's very flavory. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn the beans back on to warm them back up. And... Put it on low heat. Low heat? Okay. Yes. There were a lot more beans in there, but I've been nibbling on them. They're very good. Now, a lot, another thing that you could do is if you want your sauce to be a little bit thicker is grab like a little, some, some beans and get a fork and smash it a little and it'll make your sauce thicker. That's exactly what I do. That's what I do with the pinto beans too. I mash a little bit that thick, gives it the sauce. Now these I've been cooking for a while, so they are kind of thick. What is Mr. Hank mumbling? <laughs> He's torturing me. Uh, always. He's gonna go get something to eat. Some Italian stuff he likes. Excuse me, may I show you? Wow. You're an appetizer. See it? I, I see it. Yeah, I love these. What's wrong? Is there something wrong with that? No. It's <laughs> not Oh. Okay. So these are all softened now. I'm going to put a little bit of that garlic. Yes. And I'm going to put, I'm going to come up with the measurements and all this, and I'll put it down below in the description. Stop. I'm trying to watch you. Okay. So we'll put that in there. Yes. And then stir it. <laughs> Now grab a spoon and taste it and see if you like the taste, or if not, you could add some more to the song. Mm, I could eat that right out of the pan. That's perfect. That's perfect? Perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we've got the beans done. We have the rice cooked already. Yeah. And we're going to do the sauce or the uh, topping for the fried yuca. Yes. Now, you're now. gonna put some, <clears throat> excuse me, you're gonna put olive oil again. And I'm just gonna use the same pan. Yeah, we cook with a lot of olive oil. It's very healthy for you. Oops, except when I throw it on the floor. <laughs> and for anyone that doesn't know, yuca is, it's a starchy root and it's kind of like potato i mean cooks the same as potato you can make it this way we're just gonna we boiled it i've actually had it in the pressure cooker for about 15 20 minutes softened it up and now we're going to make the topping that get, you're going to put all over top of it and if you can't you're probably if you're not down here in south florida or in texas or somewhere like that if you can't find fresh and it's like a brown root you, i got frozen so you can just get the frozen yuca it's also called cassava Cassava root, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Cassava. <laughs> okay, so we're only putting onions in here, no pepper? You're only putting onions? Okay. Okay, and you're gonna saute the onions. Once the onions are moist, like the other ones were before uh -huh. you put it in the beans, then you're gonna add uh, another spoon of uh, garlic. Okay. All right. And then after you add that and all that's going on right now, now you could sprinkle a little bit of adobo if you want to give it flavor. The adobo you said? Yes, just okay. a little, not a lot, just a little, because you're going to get a lot of flavor after a little bit. Yeah, because you had me get mojo. Correct? We're going to use some mojo on this? Yes, we're going to use mojo, but it's going to come at, it's going to be poured in the end okay, after okay. you're done. Um, I like to make my um, my onions to look caramel, 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 like a caramel okay. color. Um, but you don't have to. Some people don't like it like that. So j you could just make it to where it's soft and pretty. <laughs> now, when you do it caramelized, are you doing it? 
just until they caramelize in here? Do you put a little brown sugar or sugar or anything? Just in until there? they caramelize in here. Okay. okay. No, no sugar, no nothing. Okay, they're caramelizing a little bit here. Okay, good. Then once you see it getting like that and stuff, you could also put in the garlic to give it flavor. Okay. About a quarter, te half teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon. Uh -huh. A pinch of salt. All right. Okay. Uh, do you have lemon? Do I have my what? Lemon. Lemon, yes. A whole lemon? Or how, no, how you're not going to put a whole lemon. You're just going to put, like, you're going to just squeeze a little bit of lemon in there. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good? Okay. Okay. I don't think it's all the brown off the bottom. Okay, now you put some um, mojo in there, mojo in there. Uh, how much mojo? You're going to tell me? Uh, you I'll tell you when to stop. Did you shake it first? Yeah. yeah. I'll shake it again. Okay. Go ahead, Perfect. Shake, shake. shake it, shake it. Yeah, you have to shake it to get all that flavor in there. Okay. I I don't see how much. Let me see the bottle where you're at with it. Perfect. Perfect. And now you can just let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes low. Low. And then you drain your uh you drain your yuca. I did that. Okay. And then once that's ready, you just pour it over your yuca. Another thing that I could suggest is if you have leftovers of yuca, you could uh, get it the next day and deep fry it. Mm. And the mojo, the seasoning that you poured over it, you could pour over it the next day. It's very, very good. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like when you have, you make potatoes or whatever, mashed potatoes and then the next day, you can make patties for breakfast with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing, but it's really good. Okay. It's very addicting. So now another thing I wanted to make that is traditional is fried plantains. Okay. So for those of you who do not know, and they aren't down here, these are not bananas. I made a big mistake when I first moved to Florida. I was in Jacksonville and I bought some, thought I was buying bananas. I wasn't buying bananas. I make banana pudding. It was awful. These do not taste like bananas. So the um, to use them and fry them for sweet, you want them yellow, just like a ripe banana, a little bit of black, same thing you'd use when you make, say, banana bread. And do you want to tell us about these and what you all you can use for with plantains? You could use those for a lot of things. You could use them for a chicken soup with all fresh Latin vegetables in it. It's very healthy for you. You can use it for uh, to make um, uh, this dessert, this Latin dessert uh, with smashed banana, and then you fill it in with whatever you like. You grab a whole banana, you smash it. You mean yuca? Uh, you really ripe, and then you wrap it, and you can fill it with meat, with pork, with shrimp, and then you deep fry it. And it's very, very good. So now... Now, when you slice those, are you going to slice them round or are you going to slice them the long way? I, I've always had, when I eat them, they're always the long way. So that's the way I usually... Do. Perfect. That okay. is perfect. That's my way. Now, the longer, you, the longer you fry them, the darker they get when you fry them, the better tasting they are. And do I have to add any sugar? Are they going to sweeten on their own? No. You don't add no sugar at all they should be sweet all by themselves but always remember greg when you get uh sweet plantains the darker the plantain is the better the, uh the sweeter it is okay yeah these were that's the darkest i could find i'm sorry what that's okay these were as dark as i could find when i went out yeah out. Um, okay so let me that's what I told them. Another thing you could do, Greg, is that they're not too ripe when you buy them. You leave them wrapped in a bag for like two or three days and they get real ripe. A paper bag or a plastic bag? A plastic bag. Okay. And you wrap it for a few days, I mean, and they they will get like really soft. Now you don't want them rotten, but you want them soft. Okay. I'm going to pour this in here so I can use this little pan. 
Perfect. And then we can just pour this over the yuca. Okay. Okay, Olga. So now the plantains, we're just using olive oil? You can use olive oil and then just fry them, and that's it. But how long does it take? Uh, it depends. It varies. Um, it could take, you know, five minutes, ten minutes. It depends. Okay. How ripe they are. They're, they're how high your, your fire is. Well, they're really soft, so they shouldn't take that long. No, they shouldn't take that long. Now, you could do them a pretty gold color. You could do them a darker color. It's up to you, your taste. Okay. Well, while those, okay. while those are starting, let's get the yuca out. And we can pour. I put them in here, pan after I took them out of the pressure cooker. Perfect. That looks great. And then just pour the sauce right over the top. You just pour the sauce right over the top. Oh, this stuff smells good. Another thing you could do with your beans, um, which I was going to show you with the motto, which is the black beans and rice cooked together. Another thing you could do with your beans to even give it more of that Latin flavor uh -huh. is you could grab a, a spoon from the side where your pork is and pour like a little spoon, like a teaspoon or a regular spoon size in there. And it gives it that more of a flavor. It's up to you. Oh, okay. Well, this is our yuca with the sauce. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna set this here. I got the plantain started. <laughs> Let me get my platter. We're going to get, see how graceful I can get the le, le, lechon asado. Lechon asado. What's that mean? Uh, roasted pork. I could have said that. That's easier. Okay, well this has been cooking for about eight hours. And like I said earlier in the video, if you want to slice it, you do it for five to six hours, and then you can slice it. I wanted it more like pulled pork, so we did it for eight hours. Now let's see if I can get this out of there without it falling apart, because it is beautiful. Try not to drip everywhere, and I did it. Beautiful, Greg. That looks beautiful. Wow. Now this is a pork shoulder. So the fat caps here, if I had bought a whole pork picnic that had the skin on it and roasted it off, then the skin you could eat, it's called chicharron. Chicharron. Chich uh -huh. Ooh, I can't speak. Chicharron. I can't roll. Chicharron. There you go. <laughs> but this is our le lechon asado. Lechon asado. Uh -huh. and I'm, I'm going to just grab my forks that I use. And as you can see, it just pulls apart very easily. This is going to be great for leftovers. You can, I got special bun. I got some onion buns for tomorrow. But let me get back over here because I don't want these to burn. I'm gonna get a little. I honestly, as many times as I've had these, I honestly thought that they were had brown sugar or sugar on them. No, they never do. Hmm. Well, there we go. I don't know. I've always saw these as like candy, like more of a dessert to me. Kind of like my great grandma used, and my mom and my grandma used to fry apples. That's a southern thing, I guess. And I love fried apples. But we did put brown sugar on those. And as you can see, they're starting to brown up on the bottom. Yes. Can you see those, Olga? Is those looking good? Yes. Okay. I can see. I'm going to put the lid back on, let them, that heat will help soften them up. So we have this, we have the. Um, 
yucca. I'm gonna set this up here out of the way. I'm gonna get the rice. Be right back. Now I've got a bowl of rice here, but I want to try these beans and rice because I've never made it this way. I've had black beans and rice, but never with all this in it. So we're gonna try a little bit of it. You, you said this is your dad's recipe? Yeah. Now when did he come from when did he come from Cuba to the US? In the 50s. And you were born you were born like in the 30s, right? <laughs> I love you. I love you too, sis. Okay, so Remember, <laughs> let's look at who has the braids and who doesn't. <laughs> Honey, I don't have anything back there. <laughs> yes, I know this. Okay, so let me taste this with the rice. Mm. This is delicious. I can make a meal just out of this. That is amazing. Okay, so this would be our typical, your typical Cuban Christmas Eve dinner. Yes, that would be our typical one. Okay. Also, do not throw the sauce away from the pork because you might want to pour it over your pork. Oh yeah. Yeah, don't don't throw the sauce away. You might want to pour some over your pork because it'll dry up if you don't pour it. Oh my Tell God. me how good that is. That's so, all the garlic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the garlic. We cook with a lot of garlic. You see, you didn't see, but you'll see in the video when I post it. I poke holes all over and I shove garlic down in it like 20 holes of garlic. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and if you marinate it two days ahead before you bake it and just uh, marinate it with the skin um, down uh -huh. and leave it in the fridge like that and then when you're going to bake it flip it and have the skin up oh my god it's to die for because the longer it sits the more of that marinade goes in it oh, and no, it's no, delicious I, yeah i only did it overnight i did it yesterday around two o'clock i put it in a big That's yellow perfect. Bag, and i put the orange i couldn't find sour oranges so i actually bought it's kind of like this it had a sour orange sauce put that in there put oregano and some cumin and just mm -hmm. massage it, put it in the refrigerator overnight. I flipped, I started out skin side down and then I flipped it over because I wanted more to get into the meat. So, yep. yep. Yeah. And yeah. always remember, as I always tell you, Cuban food is amazing. And as the days go by, it gets better. It does, it gets now, better and better. Yeah, unless you freeze it, you have to get rid of it within three to four days. I don't think there's gonna be a problem. And I know it'll be gone within two days, huh? I don't think that'll be a problem. And just like no, I- No, that'll be gone with Michael there. It'll be gone by tomorrow morning. True. Just like I show you in my pulled pork that I smoke sometimes, the bone comes right out. Wow, amazing. So, Beautiful. There it is. I appreciate you helping me out. I'm going I to love you. you. I'm going to go. Anytime. So I love you too. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, so this is my Cuban Christmas Eve dinner with our plantains and the onion and garlic sauce. This black beans and rice, you have to make black beans this way. I'll make sure I put every ingredient down there. It came out amazing. And of course, the centerpiece of the entire thing is the lechon asado. I am so happy that Olga was able to join us and help me get through some of this. Give me a little bit more confidence in doing it. I'm going to go ahead and finish up these plantains and have dinner. And I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.